The peace of the Lord be with you, and good morning. This is our devotion for um, Wednesday, December, what is that then? Today's the 9th. Wednesday, December 9th, and um, our reading will be the Old Testament lesson for this week, which is from Isaiah chapter 40. Uh, it's Isaiah chapter 40, and we'll be re reading verses 1 through 11. Uh, this is a, a familiar passage, comfort, comfort my people, right? Um, okay. Well, I'm getting this out in the morning, so we'll follow the morning order, page 295 of the hymnal. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the morning, O Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning, I prepare a sacrifice for you and watch. My mouth is filled with your praise and with your glory all the day. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. All right, uh, we read Isaiah chapter 40, verses 1 through 11. Comfort, comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that her warfare is ended, that her iniquity is pardoned, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice cries in the wilderness, prepare a voice cries in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up, and every mountain and hill be made low. And uneven ground shall become level, and the rough places a plain, and the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all flesh shall see it together, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice says, Cry. And I said, What shall I cry? All flesh is grass, and all its beauty is like the flower of the field. The grass withers, the flower fades. When the breath of the Lord blows on it, surely the people are grass. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God will stand forever. Get you up to a high mountain, O Zion, herald of good news. Lift up your voice with strength, O Jerusalem, herald of good news. Lift it up, fear not. Say to the cities of Judah, Behold your God. Behold, the Lord God comes with might, and his arm rules for him. Behold, his reward is with him, and his recompense before him. He will tend his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms. He will carry them in his bosom, and he gently lead those who are with young. Let us pray. Blessed Lord, we thank you for your word that will stand forever. We thank you for that word of forgiveness for our sins. We thank you for that word of comfort that you speak to us, that our warfare is ended, our iniquity is pardoned. Blessed Lord, we know that our sins are great and uh, that, we, um, that we hear that voice of John the Baptist in the season calling us to repent of that sin and that, uh, that, that the valleys would be lifted up and the mountains be made low by that word but that there is that mercy, that good news that you send to us in the birth of your Son, Jesus Christ, in his life, in his death and resurrection, that he will come to us, that he has come to us, that he will come again to us. Uh, having saved us from our sins, he will carry us into the eternal kingdom. And in that kingdom, he will tend us as he is that gentle shepherd, gathering us into his arms, leading those who are his to life everlasting. We give you thanks for that mercy and that love that is in him as he lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Um, all right, so as this is a, a familiar passage, you know, um, the, um, the, you know, you have this, this word that promised that there will be comfort. Comfort, comfort, my people, says your God. Um, speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that her warfare is ended, her iniquity pardoned. And that's you know this is going to fit well with the um, the, the, the the gospel, the uh, sermon that we'll have tomorrow night for um, for the Wednesday evening service. We'll talk about peace, right? Uh, the peace that we have with God, excuse me, because of what Jesus has done, right? Uh, that that we have this 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 warfare with God. We are at enmity with Him because of our sin. But Christ has reconciled us to him, that our iniquity is pardoned. And this is the promise. You know, Isaiah, of course, being Old Testament, uh, Old Testament book, this is the promise of that, that, that peace that will come in Christ. Uh, and, then, and it goes on and says uh, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all of her, all of her sins. Um, and, and so this is the note here. I was looking this up. The note here says people receive double in unmerited comfort, right? Penalty of her iniquity was paid even though she could do nothing to make amends for the debt she incurred, she received from the Lord's hand good things in double proportion to the punishment that she deserved for her sins, right? So, so there, there's on the one hand, um, you know, that we, we not only don't deserve any good from God, we actually deserve, uh, we, we deserve his wrath, 
right? Our sins deserve his wrath. So, so we, we, we have mercy in that we don't receive wrath, right? Um, but, but that, in, in, and then the flip side of that, we actually receive unending good, right? So it's, it's kind of, it's this double goodness. It, it's, um, you know, you think about it like um, when, when, a, when a, a football team is driving for a touchdown, right? And, uh, you, you know, let's say, let's say the, um, we're in Chicago, so we'll use the Bears. You know, even though I'm a Colts fan, uh, let's say let's say the, 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 the this past weekend the, the Lions had been um, you know had had been um, driving down the field, and the, the Bears defense was making mistake after mistake after mistake, uh, and and then let's say suddenly Matthew Stafford had had made a mistake on, on that and, um, and 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 thrown an, an interception, and and the cornerback had had taken that that interception and and gone down and scored a touchdown. Right, so here the, the defense was making mistake after mistake after mistake, but finally there's this thing that happens. Of course, they do it themselves, but the you know with, with our theological understanding, it's God. Um, but but it's a, um, you know when it comes to theology, that kind of thing. Um, but you know within that game, it's a 14 point swing. Right, not only do the do the Lions not get plus seven points, and the Bears you know have their their lead um, you know reduced by that much. Instead, you know they get. The Bears get plus seven points. It's a fourteen point difference. There, it's a double double portion, right? And I think that's kind of what this is saying. Not only do we not get the the due that we have for our sin and God's wrath, but we get the, the positive of of the the blessings of of, of uh, that, that Christ Himself has earned for us by His merit, right? It's a it's a it's a double swing, and, um, and so I think that's what that what that's saying here. And, uh, and and you think about that also. Not only are we not punished for our sins, but Christ Himself bears that punishment for for us. Uh, so He receives double the the you know the the um, He didn't do anything wrong, and He receives the punishment for it. We didn't do anything right, and we receive the benefit that He won for us. Right. So I think that's that's, that's clear there. Um, okay, going on. And this is the section here that's uh, it's referencing uh, for for John the Baptist. That's what we have it this week. A voice cries. Uh, Interestingly, uh, the gospel writers say a voice cries in the wilderness, uh, quote, prepare a way for the Lord. Uh, here we have a voice cries, quote, in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. Um, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Now, I've got a note here that I'd written at some point, somebody pointed out. These two, this, these two phrases, this one verse, verse 3, is active, right? Prepare the way of the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for the Lord our God. And, and then you get passive. Uh, every valley shall be lifted up, every mountain in the hill be made low, uh, even ground shall become level. These are all, like all these are all uh, passive, uh, you, know, you know, passive phrases, passive verbs. These they're not. It's not God's doing the doing. Really, is the point, right? Uh, even ground shall become level. The rough place is a plain, and then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all flesh shall see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Um, you know, so what the word does, and we're going to see this here in a second, drawn out more. The word actually does the doing there. The law comes, God's commands come, and they say, "Do this," uh, and they also say, "Yet you haven't done that as you ought," and that creates in us that humility. You know, we think we hear "do this," and we think, "Okay, I'm doing pretty good, right?" If I if I if I don't take this seriously, and then you hear Jesus coming. Uh, well, for you, first of all, you hear John coming. Repent. You brood of vipers, right? Uh, and so you had, you, in particular, he's talking to the Pharisees. The Pharisees looked really good, but their heart was on their own uh, justifying of themselves and their own self-righteousness. And so here they, they think they're mountains. Those mountains get crushed, right? Whenever we try to justify ourselves, build ourselves up to be mountains, we get crushed by the law, which says, you have not done this. Uh, the, the, uh, as it says in Romans 3.20, um, for no one will be declared righteous in his sight by observing the law. Rather, through the law, we become we become aware of sin. We, we comes comes knowledge of sin, right? Um, we become conscious of it, and so so that that law humbles us and makes our plane flat. That the that the, the King of Glory may enter in, right? Uh, it's not something we ourselves do. It's something that the, that that Word of God works in us. Uh, but as we see this, the glory of God shall be revealed. I've got a note here, uh, John one fourteen. Again, that's not something I, I I came up with. Something somebody else pointed out to me. I'm, I'm presuming. Um, John one fourteen. Uh, you know, in John one one. The word the word in the beginning was the word. The word was with God, and the word was God. John one fourteen. The word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld His glory. Glory as of the only Son revealed from the Father, right? Um, so that's the glory of the Lord and the Son. And the glory, and 
tied to tie to John, the glory of the Lord is found uh, in its height on the cross. That uh, that love that, that God has for us, right? Uh, verse six: A voice says, "Cry," and I said, "What shall I cry?" What do we hear here? Then uh, six, seven, and eight: All flesh is grass, and all its beauty is like the flower of the field. The grass withers, the flower fades. When the breath of the Lord blows on it, surely the people are grass. The grass withers, the flower fades. Uh, you know, the point being here that uh, the things of this world are transient. You know, the beauty of this world are, is transient. You can have the most beautiful flowers in, in the spring, and, uh, and, and yet they wither and, and, and fall away. The grass can be lush and glorious and soft, and by winter it dries up and it turns brown. Um, so also with humanity, you can have, uh, you know, look, look, at, look, at, uh, look at Hollywood and, and the beautiful people in Hollywood. And, um, <laughs> you know, think of... Uh, uh, Mrs. Doubtfire movie that, that my wife and I enjoy, uh, where where Robin Williams' character makes a joke about about Pierce Brosnan, about all these 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 people at the country club, right? Now, oh, not a natural body among them, or something like that, right? Uh, you get to this point where your body just breaks down and it loses that that beauty that it, that that it once had. Uh, it doesn't matter how how. Uh, much we, we might try to be fit and in shape at a point the body is going to break down because it bears the curse of sin and yet what does remain the word of God or God will stand forever you know I, I had my mug last week that I pointed out the, uh, the my heaven and earth will pass away but my words will not pass away and I said the VDMA verba domini uh, manat ad eternum right um, the word the word verbum uh, domini of God manat remains ad eternum forever and uh, that's that's where that comes from from Isaiah uh, 40 verse 8 here um, so so there, there's some law preaching here right um, you, you, you're gonna die right is the law uh, because of your sin you deserve it um, but the Word of God will, will remain forever and what is this word that we can now hear get you up on a high mountain verse 9 O Zion herald of good news good news the the evangel the good news um, lift up your voice with strength O Jerusalem, herald of good news, lift it up, fear not. Say to the cities of Judah, Behold your God. Behold, the Lord God comes with might in his arm. You know, his power rules with him and his recompense before him. And, of course, where is God's power? Uh, as it says in 2 Corinthians 12, My power is made perfect in weakness. And look at the power of the cross, the weakest looking thing. right? What kind of God dies on a cross? Right? That's what the pagans would say to the Christians. Your God dies on a cross. What kind of God is that? What kind of weak God dies? Uh, the God who who is such has such strength uh, that in His death He actually brings about everlasting life, right? Um, because as He dies on that cross and as He is hanged for sin, He rises again to new life in forgiveness of sin and victory over death and in, in triumph over over the devil who has brought all of this pain and suffering into the world, right? Uh, and in, 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 in that in that power uh, in that weakness. He will tend his flock like a shepherd. Uh, he will gather the lambs in his arms. I think of, um, you know, the, the 23rd Psalm, of course. There, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in, in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He leads me path, in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Right, so the the, the the good shepherd leading us, and, and, and ultimately, what's it, you know, what's it say then? Uh, you set a, a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Right, that shepherd, uh, bring us into his into his arms. He will carry them in his bosom. Right, to bring us to to his bosom, and gently leading those who are uh, who, who are with young. Right, and that is the. Um, you know this this promise that um, oh interesting I'm just, I just noticed the note here fold of a robe above the sash that could hold a sick or injured lamb uh, you know as we are sick and injured in our sin this this uh, shepherd who who cradles us to his chest and, and cares for us and carries us out of out of danger's way right um, and, then, and it says John one eighteen I've got a note there too John one eighteen that's um, you know where it talks about uh, that, that no one has ever seen God, but the God who is in the Father's bosom has, has made him known, right? Uh, it translates to Father's side, but that's out of his bosom, right? Uh, the, this, this bosom of God, Christ, who comes from the bosom of the Father, carrying us to his bosom, that we would be, would be provided for. Uh, and, and that's what we're, you know, that's what Christmas is all about. We're celebrating at Christmas in the midst of all the chaos and craziness that's going on. We have the one born to us who has overcome all of it 
and, and, and carries, brings us to himself, that we would have life in him. Amen. All right, uh, we continue with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell, and the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. And I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul in all things. Let your holy angel be with me that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen.